and Scott, welcome to the Marketing for Business podcast. Hello. Mate, I've got to say happy birthday. Yeah, well, that's right. I've got a big one coming up tomorrow. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, happy birthday well. yesterday. I could be I could be cheeky and say we've got a lot of experience, but I won't go into the years how many experience yeah. we've got on this, uh, no when it comes to marketing. Um, look, looking back, um, we're going to have a great chat today because you're a marketer. Uh, I was lucky enough to have your business partner, Greg, on the podcast uh, a wee while back, and I really enjoyed our chat because, I, I, as I said, I like talking to marketers. I like talking to people that are, you know, and not only just marketers but a wealth of experience when it comes to marketing and helping business owners so i appreciate your time yeah well good thank you awesome awesome hey so so let's go back a bit because uh, i've been reading your linkedin profile <laughs> doing some research you were the marketing manager for jade jade software yeah well that was a long time ago um that happened in the mid 90s when uh, jade invented a product called jade the company wasn't called jade yeah then. And yeah, and then they said, right, who's going to, you know, the whole company of technical people. Yeah. Who's the less technical yeah. uh, to head up their marketing team? So that's how things sort of started. That's and were, were you a technical guy? Like you, you were trained technically? Um, well, actually, if we go right back, I did a degree in a subject called operations research, which oh, is wow. actually very mathematical. <laughs> uh, so Operations research? Yeah. So that's about optimization. Wow. Okay. Uh, so I do. I do sort of. We can talk about this probably another yeah. podcast to explain what that is. Yeah. But, um, so, but I, I didn't really. I sort of came from a semi-technical role, more yep. um, like not programming, but the disciplines around that. Yeah. Okay. So like product management, you know, uh, project management, managing a team, all those sorts of bits and pieces. So, so how do you go from there to, to being into marketing? Like, a, yeah, good question. Um, I think. Um, I mean, I I enjoyed always the the front end. You know, I was always the guy doing the presentations. Yep. I was always doing the front end stuff. Yep. And then I think mixed with, I suppose, my technical background enabled me to become a marketing manager in a tech company. Nice. And and obviously, learn a lot along the way, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, we both Greg and I. You know, we can talk about concentrate in a moment, but. Mm. We learned a lot of the fundamentals of marketing from a person called Howard Russell, and he's oh, yeah. passed away now. But he was a real uh, marketing strategist for a lot of the big brands, you know, consumer brands. Yep. And he did work for us at Jade, and he just, that was like, we, you know, we sort of did a PhD in six months with him. He was nice. amazing. What yep. was he drumming into you guys? What were you learning? Oh, there? it's all, a, it's all, a, it's always about the fundamentals and the foundation. You know, yep. it's about, you know, those the real fundamentals of strategy around marketing and getting those clarity around all that. And that's yeah. really what we built Concentrate on. Yeah. Was, yeah. And when you say fundamentals, what are some of the fundamentals in your eyes and his eyes that mm. you were kind of... Uh, it's with? just, you know, like clarity around who's your customer. Yep. You know, the problem you solve for them. Yeah. And what's unique about your business and the way you solve it. And yeah. You know, really that's what we built a business around was answering those three questions yep. for companies. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so you, you really knew who you, you who you who were. Yeah. Like you really got clear on that and the problem that you solved. A lot of businesses don't actually think about that. They think about solution first, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And and then they build, build something. Yeah. And then there's no problem, so no one buys it, yeah. and they spend a ton of money and a ton of time. Uh, with if they just maybe step back a bit and looked at some of those fundamentals. Yeah. I think too, when you answering those questions, what's the problem we solve? Too many companies they try and answer it themselves. You True. know, the reality is, you. I mean, you've sort of got an idea, but you'll never express it the way that yeah. the customer does, and so you always have to step out of your business and ask them. Yeah, I think I remember talking to a lady once, and she had spent forty odd grand, had an idea for this business, and she had a really nice business card, she had a really nice brochure, she had a really nice sign written car, website, and no sales. I yeah. said, have you gone and talked to anyone? Like, did you go and talk to some customers? Yeah. And she didn't talk to anyone. And I said, go and talk to 10 people. Don't come back unless you do. Yeah. She sold eight of those people when she started talking to people about it. You know, she said, just get an order form and start talking about the problems yeah, yeah. they have, you know, and finding out the problems that they have. And then, oh, by the way, I've got this, you know? Um, and I think a lot of businesses go to that, right? They go to what they've got first. So, so a good tip that you've just given there is, you know, go to the marketplace and start yeah. talking to them. Right? Yeah. So, so how long were you at Jade for? Like, as a, as a, were you straight um, in as a marketing manager, or did you no, come in as a? Oh, I was there twelve years, and it was probably six, six and six, six in marketing and six in other roles. Okay. Um, what did you love about being the marketing manager? 
Um, you know? I love the customer engagement. Yeah. I mean, because I was sort of marketing sales, you know, so yeah. marketing manager was like, I was the, you know, the guy that people come from all around the world and we'd, we'd tell them Jade and I was the guy that go and do the pitch. I love that. Um, nice. And then obviously the launch of Jade, so that was a bit textbooky, you know, we went through, we'd never done a product launch before and yep. so like we just went through everything, you know, what's the name, you know, yep. <laughs> who's going to buy it, lots of arguments in the company and stuff. What, and was, it, what was the product that you were launching? Uh, that was Jade. The, the software product itself? Yeah. Oh yeah, wow, yeah, oh yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, so it, it was another company then, it was called Araki Corporation. All right, yep. And in some ways what Concentrate came out of was almost a lot of the frustration uh, no, I'm sure if that's the right word, but you know, you just suppose sort of some of the frustrations that we had in Jay. Yep. You know, that dominated by inside thinking, yeah, yeah. dominated by yep. technical, yep. and you know, you sort of want to do things differently, and yeah. so that's Held how back a wee bit. Yeah, yeah, that's how we sort of started it. That's probably how I, why I started my business too. Like, I, I remember working for a large corporate and I just saw them spending money yeah. without actually measuring anything, and I was accountable to a group of. Uh, I guess resellers throughout New Zealand, and one day one of the two of the guys them had a meeting with them, and they're like, "Where's that money getting spent that we gave you?" Yeah, yeah. And I and I and I felt bad that it went on a campaign with two hundred fifty grand over the weekend, and no one measured anything, you know. Yeah. And it was kind of falling into that trap. Yeah. Um. So I was like, right, but you know, okay. So 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 then two thousand and was it two thousand four? You started. Yep. yep. So yep. you just celebrated our twenty years in business. How good. Yeah, it's a long time. That's awesome. That is awesome. And so you and Greg were working at Jay together, yep. and you both decided to, were you like, around the coffee table, hey, these we should start our own business? Like, what are you doing? Um, or what's your idea? Or Yeah, it was, yep, I sort of, it was sort of my conception, you know, I and pitched it to Greg. Greg actually didn't join Concentrate initially, so I started by myself. Yep. And then he joined me, he went and worked at the City Council, and... Um, he, yeah, he, he soon joined us. <laughs> uh, no comment there. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's lots of conversations around that starting. I used to start writing myself lists, saying, "Right, I'm going to leave here when I've done these 20 things." Yeah, and then I'd tick them all off, and I'd write myself another list. No, nice. I sort of procrastinating, yeah, procrastinating, because yeah, yeah. I was living in the corporate world yeah. and then going out on my own. It was like a bit scary. Yeah. Um, what was the, what was the catalyst? You think at the end of the day for starting that business though? What was the anything that really pushed you over the line, or was it just? Well, it's weird thinking actually. If I look back now, because I worked in Jade, and it's one of the bigger tech companies in Christchurch, yeah. and in some ways we were so isolated from the community a little bit, or the, yeah. the industry that always thought that oh, if I leave Jade, I'm going to have to work for another tech company, so I'm going to have to go to Auckland. Okay. And so I didn't want to do that. And so I went out by myself. But then when you get out there, you realise that on every street there's a company that's actually quite big and yeah, doing yeah. amazing stuff. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. Um, and so that's been a bit of a learning for myself in those early days. Yeah. And so, so it was just a leap of faith as well, though, right? Yeah, like pretty you much. Gotta, just got to go. Yeah. I, did, I did manage to sign up. So SLI Systems. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, well. My first customer, I signed up sort of 20 hours a week with them before I left. So it shows you how risk averse I was. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, you gotta, have a, you gotta have a backstop sometimes, eh? Yeah. What, uh, what was the, like, did you, the thought process around the name and all that sort of stuff, and did you have your who? Did you go through the problem you solved? Did you have your new, yep. unique thing all sorted? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we'd, we were quite specific around that. So, you know, concentrates all around, what we stand for is focus, you know, particularly, well, when we started, it was all around Focusing on the right market, focus on the right message. You know, mm. it was all focus, focus, rather than yeah, all over the place. And so, you know, our value, we the value we added to companies is we went in and focused them up and nice. got there. You know, so if we think of SLI Systems, our contribution to them in the early days was they had a search tool. So if you went to a website, yes, they did. Didn't you they? type in yep. the search, yep. it finds all the products. They were selling that to. Everybody, so yep. for example, City Council was a customer of this. Yep. And then when we went through a process, it sort of sounds really obvious now, but the process we went through is sort of like, well, if we looked at all the industries, the City Council website, if search doesn't work, it's just another City Council with a bad website. Yeah. Like the City Council still keeps yeah. struck along. Yeah. Whereas e commerce, if they're bad search, yeah. they don't sell. Yeah. And so it led us to USA top 1,000 e-commerce companies. Nice. And that became their absolute focus and everything switched to, yeah. basically we bought a list of the 1,000 and that, like we didn't have to talk about target market no. anymore, we had a list, A to Z. A to Z. Done. 
and and also a real problem. Yeah, like yeah, and and a desire to fix that real problem yeah. too. Where yeah. maybe the council, eh, yeah, yeah, you know, they might be a customer and they keep paying you because no one ever looking yeah. at stuff, but yeah. but not a real. Yeah. You're not going to grow the business off the back of that kind of customer, are you? Yeah. You're going to grow a business off the back of hey, you need to go deal with these guys. You know, like they can help you solve that particular problem, especially in that e-commerce yeah. e-commerce space. So so for you, obviously. I like the term getting people focused up. That, that's yeah. like, like, because a lot of people aren't that focused, right? Yeah. You come into it and it's like, but do, you, is, do you reckon that is because marketing is just seen as another foreign language to people? Or have we made it a foreign language? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's quite funny because actually in those days we were quite um, oh, a bit anti, like not anti, but we swam against the tide a little bit yep. on, you know, we always our main sort of subject line when we ever ran, you know, like our theme for when we ran web, well not really webinars in those days, you know, seminars yep. and events and was this concept of burn your brochures. I remember and So that. we were a yeah. bit sort of swimming against the tide. We almost sort of, you know, first thing we'd say, just get rid of all those, fire all those marketers and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> but the sort of whole patch a little bit was everyone was trying to do their marketing without what we call the marketing foundation, without yeah. that clarity of, you know, they didn't know who their customer I'd, We'd go into some, I won't name them, but really large corporates in Christchurch. Yeah. We got their whole sales team in a room. They came from all around the world. And we just asked them three questions. The first question was, who's your customer? Yep. And an hour later, the still argument. Yeah, yeah. And then the second question is the problem you solve. Yeah. And like we made a living out of this. It was yeah. great. And we just... Who's, who are problem you solve? And yeah. another hour, they're all arguing. And then we'd get on to the value proposition. And then we'd pitch basically a project. Well, why don't we go and talk to 20 of your customers and nice. we'll distill that down into yeah. your message? Yeah. And we that first 10 years, that was sort of our, and then we'd get. And hugely valuable though, right? Yeah. Because the first two, they're just guessing. You know, yeah. it's all it's all about what they think. Yeah, 100%. Nothing what the market thinks. And big argument. Yeah, yeah. And because we think. This is us, and, and also if you look at sales versus marketing, they're always going to have a different opinion, aren't they? Yeah. You know? Well, um, and also the, uh, in the size companies we're dealing with, it's tended to be you know small, medium, or you know mid-tier tech companies. Yeah. The, there's always a tech entrepreneur founder, and they sort of have double votes. Yep. In all this, yeah. in all these arguments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it all got very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But great for you guys because obviously once again there's a gap there right yeah massive gap um and and so you you're i guess it's quite cool i like what you're doing though you're making yourself uh positioning yourselves away from the maybe the branding agencies and all that would yeah. that at that time right who who would have been doing business with those companies right yeah. making their website look great making their brochures look great but probably and and, and also taking the messages from the people, yeah. not taking it from the market. Yeah. So there would have been a bit of there would have been a bit of friction there, I guess. Yeah, it wasn't sort of. It, it sounds like that, but it, you know, in reality, it sort of wasn't because what we're sort of saying is just pause everything, get this foundation. Yeah. Because of course you need to, you know, yeah. all the creative agencies to do yeah. do great, but the execution would be so much better, better. if we have clarity yeah. around this stuff. Yeah, and when you started to roll that through, like obviously starting to pick up some customers doing that, what were some of the big takeaways for you as far as learnings? What were you learning from? Um, well, yeah, good question. Um, it, well, the learnings were, no one had the answers to these things. We yeah. actually got quite confident or cocky around it, you know, because, <laughs> you know, we, we went into telecom, like we did all sorts of projects. Like, yeah. No one can answer these things. No. Um, it sounds quite ridiculous. The, there was always power, like what would happen is, so it's almost like if I want to know about you, Scott mm. Wilson. And if I go and talk to six of your friends, six of your family members, and six yep. of people here from work, yep. I'd sort of only, I don't need to have a big conversation. If I had sort of a quarter of an hour with each of those people, yep. there would just be some themes that come out about you as a person and yep. sort of who you are, what you stand, you know, sort of some value. It all just comes out as that sto- we call a story. Nice. And that's how we approach the company is if we just talk to a whole mix of sort of customers. And it doesn't have to be scientific. It was just the, you know, now with ChatGPT, you'd put all the transcripts into that and it'll mm. tell you the answer. But it's the themes that come out of that. Yeah. They became your strengths and weaknesses. And we'd find that that would be, that was absolute magic. It would yeah. change the direction of the company. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. It's like, 
um, well, just a real simple example around the problem is that we had a company that produced software for a rowing machine. Oh, yeah. So what I mean is, I've got a rowing machine, everyone knows what they are, Concept 2 sort of type rowing machine. Yep. Plug my laptop into it, and on the laptop I could uh, do training plans, I could join on the internet and race against you, I could do all sorts, you know, yep. all sorts of training cool. stuff. From them, you know, their website was um, all about the product, it was all yeah. about software, rowing, I mean, who knows yeah. what rowing software is. Yeah. We sort of went through a process talking to their customers and we really found that the problem they solved was motivation. Wow. So people, basically rowing's a bit boring, yeah. get a bit sick of it and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, so really what our project was, was to get that organisation out of the mindset or out of the software business and into the motivation business. And it was really interesting that it led us to a target market in you know the UK, which was sort of teenage girls who had, a, you know, who struggled to be motivated around exercise. There was a lot of investment going into that, and actually yeah, yeah. that was actually a really good market for them. You know, it just sets you on a different path when you get a problem, yeah. a customer problem. So good though, right? Like because yeah. they, these guys created that rowing machine, the software, not thinking about any of that, right? Yeah. They just created it probably because one, they liked the idea, they had the skills, yep. but they don't, we guarantee they didn't think about well, the problem that they were solving, which was motivation, because yep. yep. that can only come out of talking to people, yep. right? We doubled their website traffic when we overnight switched it from software to motivation. Yeah. It was... Yeah, um, good. Yeah. And and then all of a sudden, you open up another market yep. as well that they would have never even thought of. Well, the challenge for them is all of a sudden, uh, we need to understand motivation, we need to understand mm. the problems that people have with motivation, what motivates people, we need to explain that to them and yeah. then put our software into that story. So yeah. it set them on a different th- path. I think it's a really good, yeah, it's a good example. Um, yeah, that, that was transformative for them. And, and when you, so, so you start talking to people, right, you start understanding and, and like listening, obviously you're obviously listening to really understand what's going, what, what they're really saying. What, were you just looking at the common themes? Like, if you talked to ten people, and you know, six of them said it was about motivation. Was that like the okay? That's we've got it. Like, is that the um, pretty much? It would you know we'd we'd have a few skills to sort of yeah see between the you kind of oh that's a good idea yeah, yeah. yeah. but literally I'd uh, have a big whiteboard yep and I'd read the transcripts and, nice and you know they've said oh, what well, I like that your company is responsive support no, right responsive support tech. Nice. And then you'd sort of summarise it. It was an analytical process. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a, I didn't yeah, sort of read and say, Owen oh, Scott thinks. No. It was maths. You know, maths. It, was, it was that. And then, so that was my sort of background. Nice. Greg's, I'm the analytical guy, yeah. so I did that. Greg's the storyteller. Nice. And so he, he would take that and then, yeah. um, you know, spruce it up into an amazing. And then we'd go to a creative agency yeah. and say, how do we express motivation? Yeah. And all of a sudden, Oh, okay, now we're in a different space. Nice. So good. Because mm. you've got a real, well, it's a concept, right? It's a big idea that you can actually put something behind yeah. uh, and move the needle with it, right? Yeah. And as you move the needle, you double the website traffic, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I wonder how many companies have gone, you know, for a better word, to the grave without actually understanding any of that, right? Like, uh, yeah, say, most of them. Yeah. <laughs> That, well, the interesting thing is, so in a textbook, if you read the marketing textbooks, yeah. it says, you know, go and research the market, find a problem, yeah. and then build the product. It never happens that way. No. The reality is, some smart mm. entrepreneur, because of their experiences, like this guy, yeah. comes up with their own software. Yeah, yeah. But it's about just getting some people using it, yeah. and then pausing and then finding the yeah. market. Yeah, and know? then finding the market, yeah. talking to them. It doesn't sort of happen the way the textbook says. Yeah. Totally, and, and and the good thing is, like, I always find I mean, the more you talk to the people and, you, and, the, and the users, etc., you find you find those little things of why they're using it, you know. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, I use it for motivation. I use yeah. it because because there'll be things, you know. You see people at the gym on the rowing machine, and they've got the dart um, board up on the on the screen, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're, they're gamifying it, yeah. you know. And then that's another reason to be maybe they wouldn't be doing the rowing if they if they didn't have that. Yeah. happening in their world what a, what a, what a um, I think you know I think I said to Greg as well like you 
definitely complement each other than you two. You know, like obviously, yep. yeah, you know, you're the analytical guy, um, but then the storyteller as well. Have you grown to, to like the story side of it as well, though, over the years? Um, or do you stay in your lane? I sort of stay in my lane. It's quite funny because we, you know, we used to come up with the analytical bit and then, you know, we'd both work on some words around the story and it was became a bit of a game about who comes up with it. But no, I sort of stay, I can't do that. I, yeah. I just stay in my lane. Stay in your lane. But he can't, you know, he can't add up. So <laughs> perfect. Yeah, true. So true. Um, yeah, so, there has been, it's like, you know, I do describe it as my, you know, it's like my second marriage, but we haven't had an argument. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I don't know if it's true though. You sure you haven't had an argument? No, we haven't really. How many you got how many you got in your team now? Um it's like seventeen. Nice. Yeah. Do you do you like you enjoy employing people? Like is that uh, fun for you? Do you, do you like um the process of or yeah. you mean the no, result no, the, of the yeah. result of, yeah, yeah, yeah the no, process no, of no, it's good. Like, it's hard work. What's well, really good because I just find uh just business is really frustrating. I yeah. find it quite you know, because it's because um, we've always been really good as we just see something we want and we want it instantly and we want to change. And yep. so it becomes frustrating as you get bigger because it takes yeah. longer and stuff. So employing people is great if you get a great person and they just yeah. go, well, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll, know, sort that I'll sort that out. Yeah, I'm the expert at that. Yeah. And, you go, and we're there. That's yeah. just awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that is the coolest part, eh? When, yeah. you, when you know you've got someone who will just get on with it yeah. and, and you're not going to have to do too much hand-holding and... And or like uh, one of the best things I've ever heard, and it came from one of our younger staff, is that like initiative up, is up for grabs in this office. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, that is so good from someone so young. Yeah. But it's so true, right? Like yeah. as an employer, you want someone who's who's who, okay. I'll sort that for you. Yeah. I'll take I'll take care of that. And and you know you get on with it. Have you seen like um, your market? You know, the, you're obviously in the tech space. Have you seen, like, has that evolved for you guys as, like, moving into other areas or are you still looking into the, you're still dealing with the tech space? Um, you know, we're, we're changing quite rapidly. Yep. So, um, you know, for most of our life, we have been experts in tech. So, like, if I just go back a bit, you know, I talked about focus. So our magic source for growing companies is about focus. So yep. it's about becoming number one in something as soon as possible. Yeah. So, and we've sort of lived by that and we've been in the tech sector and, you know, so much so is that we literally would beat an agency, you know, we had a customer in Auckland, you know, an agency that did the same as us that, you know, was on the floor above. Yep. But we beat them because we're the experts in tech. In, in, in tech, you know, yeah. And so what happened is, you know, you just understand the patterns. You bring it. A SaaS company, and like we can talk about all their issues because yeah. they're common, and you know them right. And we know them, you yeah. know, they're all, it sort of works. So we've done that. Now, a big part of our business is selling sales and marketing, like a tech stack, so yeah. support sales and marketing yeah. and customer service. And so that is now taking us. Uh, we're trying to do bigger projects with bigger companies, and so we're sort of broadening to yeah. more B two B than tech. Nice. So are you moving? Because obviously, you guys are that uh, what. One of the best at HubSpot in New yeah, Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so you, you're putting packaging that up and selling it to bigger companies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we we're quite a different business now. Now yeah. we're about we've sort of moved out of that foundation business. Yeah. Far more into enabling organisations to do sales and marketing, you know, through technology. That's awesome. It's pretty and much. Uh, was was big. that the change there? Just changing with the market, or you started to use HubSpot and you started to get understand it more and start to see, oh, actually, this could help this business as well. Yeah. If you plug this in here, you can do this, this, and this. Yeah. Is it? Well, our evolution was, you know, like phase one, we were doing, you know, we were doing research and strategy and foundation. And then we'd build, the output would be some sort of plan that we'd write. And then we actually got a bit annoyed with com- customers, yeah. if you'll have to say that. Um, because they wouldn't execute on the plan. Yeah, yeah, and true. it was like, well, get out of the way, we'll do it. And yeah. so we put a team together yeah. to do market execution. You know, yeah. We'll do everything. Like, yeah. We'll write you. You, know, yeah. you. you want something written up, we'll get it written up. Yeah. If you want people called, we'll call them. Um, and so that was sort of phase two. And then technology started appearing. And so as an agency, we stepped into HubSpot for us to deliver services more efficiently to our customers. Nice. And then this HubSpot thing, which has just been you know, just a juggernaut in terms of the actual 
tech company themselves in, yeah. the, in the states. Oh, huge. Their growth yeah. is that it's just it's just been an opportunity that's just taken us on a different direction, and now it's sort of yeah. we're now a HubSpot implementer yeah. and a fixer. It's just taken over. I sent a few people your way. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if you're that happy, but oh, we see stuff. You know, we see yeah. people using HubSpot, and we're like, "Who did this for you?" Oh, this guy down the road here. I was like, "Oh no, yeah, you know? yeah. like it's it's massive. It's massive." And and so so for you guys, I guess, um, who would you compete against in that market now? Like, who does uh, like is it other software that people are using, or is it is it their own people using their own software? Um, so most companies, if we're putting, you know, HubSpot in initially, have a cobbled together sort of tech stack. So they, yep. they've they grown up with, you know, they might have Salesforce for their sales team, they might have MailChimp for marketing, they might have Campaign Monitor for marketing, they might have all sorts of things, Pipe yep. Drive, whatever. Yep. And all kind of cobbled together. together. Yep. And they have issues with that, and then we throw it out and put in HubSpot. Nice. So the competitors quite, you know, it's quite varied. Quite, yeah. Traditionally, say in the tech industry, they're all self-service people. You know, yep. they've they've just downloaded something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made and, it work. Yeah, and you know, this is sometimes their fourth CRM and stuff because they've just grown out of it, grown out of it, yep. and then it's all getting a bit serious because the company's actually all of a sudden got six salespeople and two of yeah. them are in the states and all this yeah. sort of stuff. Um, yeah, larger companies, they obviously have had some organisations so they put Salesforce in for them. Yeah. Yeah, and and look, all those bits of software are great, but if you don't really understand the bigger picture, yeah, then a lot of times they either don't get used or they don't they get used inefficiently. Yeah, yeah. So when you're going in now, do you set everything up like you you see where the problems are in the business with with the tech stack and go, okay, based on what you've got, here's what we recommend, and do you obviously have different levels of what you offer these days? To, yep, to businesses. Yep. I mean, I think if you step back a bit, you know, like the reason a company would put in this tech. You know, particularly in the B2B space, mm. that's where we sort of live, is that if you just look at the B2B buyer, you know, we used to, it, as, a, as a salesperson, we'd drive around and see everybody and whatever, and have yeah. meetings with them, travelling salesperson. Now the B2B buyer, if you just think of what we do in our personal lives, mm. if I buy a mountain bike, you know, I research it online, or I totally. look at reviews, and then I might go into a store, yeah. but I've got my mind made up. Yeah. Um, that's happening in the B2B world. People yeah. are buying things for, you know, hundred thousand dollars online yeah and so yeah the confidence is there now right yeah and so that whole journey now and so organizations uh, you know like you take a manufacturer here in Christchurch you know and they're trying to sell their stuff overseas they're not set up for any sort of digital engagement yeah so the fact is your customers are researching online like that's a fact yeah fully so if they're not on your website they're on someone else's website. Yeah. They're researching yeah. someone else's yeah. papers. They're getting influenced by other people's information. So you need to sort of step into that and get your marketing engagement online. And then obviously in the sales side, we need a digital sort of enabled sales team. Yeah. They're using all the modern tools and can engage with people. And, you know, and then we move into customer service. So if you look at and then it's all underpinned with a CRM. And mm. so a lot of these, you know, sort of mid tier companies are using the CRM they're trying to use is their sort of ERP system, which is yep. sort of like we call them like a system of record yep. type ERP yep. CRM that, you know, end of the day, oh yeah, remember to yep. remember to update the system out the back. Yeah. You know, so it's putting this whole front end on a business, something oh. that you can engage with people. Yeah. I think you made a really good point there, though. You know, like if they're not on if they're not on your website, they're on someone else's. Yeah, you know, and they're on your competitors because your competitors giving them an, a bit of ex, better experience uh, online. What uh, what do you think some of the keys are to that for for a business when when you know they might be thinking, oh, actually, we're getting we maybe we're not doing a great job there. What do they need to do to uplift what they're doing yeah. in those areas? So I think the. Um well, the first thing is, that, I mean, the centre of all this is your website. So yep. people talk about social media and this is for businesses, business to business, I think, really, if we just sort of restrict this to that, because that's where most of my experience is. The, what, what the model we use is we sort of build a really good website with information on it and then use all those other channels like email, social, Google Ads to bring people to the website. So it's sort of the way the thing works. So you need to, I mean, websites in the old days used to be these, you know, it was a, once in a lifetime build, you'd build this flashy 
thing, you know, that like award winning. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas <laughs> now the most important thing, I mean, it's still good, you know, you've got to have it look good and stuff, but yeah. the most important thing now is it's a site that you can add information to every day yeah. and get it into Google. Totally. So that's sort of like priority one. So it's getting that sort of mechanism in yeah. place, being able to publish information, to write things and publish, you know, whether it's in video form or in ebook form, whatever, but that's a real challenge for companies that they're not set up, don't have time and resources to do. No. Or, or it's just clunky and, or yeah. I, I feel like, I think I, even over the years, a lot of businesses don't put content on their website because one, they haven't had access to do it. Yeah. Uh, no one's trained them in doing it. Or if they did do it, it cost them an arm and a leg. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, yeah. where it doesn't need to be that way, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you should be able to control, you need to control your own race course and you're one of the race course, part of the race course is your website, right? Yeah. You, you know. Um, digital and so- sales engagement. What do you what we kind of mean by that? You mean like, is that like having lead magnets and that type of stuff, or what? Are, what's the um, so a lot of the stuff around sales. So the first part of sales is obviously being plugged into marketing. Mm. So giving salespeople visibility to what's happening on the website, who's on the website, are any of my prospects engaging on the website, are any yep. of them reading stuff, you know, that's the sort of, yeah. and giving so, them So leads. knowing if that's happening too, Knowing right? if that's happening. Yeah, yeah, which is game changer. Yeah. You know? And we want it, you know, live and we want it yeah. whatever. So there's that sort of window, and then there's just tools around a salesperson that around, you know, how do I manage my pipeline? How do I know what I should be working on today? How do I create tasks? Even that silly little thing about, you know, if I want to meet with you, send you an email and I say, can I meet at 10? And then you go, no, 11, and then we do eight emails. Yeah. Rather than having a little tool, a little like calendar link yep. that I can send to you and you can self-service and book it. You know, book like, it. Yeah. There's just all these tools yeah. that make a salesperson more productive. More productive. Nice. Versus not having it and you're doing that back. You're doing it. That's right. And they're blind. They've got no idea what's happening on the website. They're not getting leads from marketing, and then all these tools are just manual, and they're storing everything in a spreadsheet. Yeah, with versus you know like okay, this person's been on your website four times. You know, you've given them a proposal. They've come back the last, you know, forty eight hours, twenty four hours. Yeah. You know, they they are they they just probably need some confidence to make a decision. Um, yeah, so we reach out it. to them. You bring them up, say hey, yeah. you know, anything we can do to help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, versus if you don't know that, you don't know that, right? Yeah, You're flying blind. Um, what what sort of uplift have you seen in, in sales when businesses implement this sort of system? Um, well, significant, really. I mean, a lot of the metrics are, you know, because sometimes it's hard to do metrics around sales per se, because obviously, I mean, that's the ultimate metric. Yeah. Um, and that's what we want to be all focused on is revenue, which is good. Uh, that's what marketing and sales, you know, totally. that's what their KPI should be. Yeah, yeah. But obviously there's a lot of things that go in there, like is the company's product actually any good? Yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah, a, bit, yeah. a bit of things in there. So, you know, we tend to start with, you know, like, the main metrics we look at are funnel metrics. So it's website visits, mm-hmm. you know, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, nice. sales opportunities, yeah, yeah. close one deals. Perfect. That's our main, and then we can get into more stuff. That's, that's sort of, that's our main metrics and then we can break everything down. Because you know if you're looking after that area you're probably going to be driving that revenue which is yep. what you're about right? Yep. Yeah. That's very cool. Do you find you having to educate um, the business owner about the how you guys work and because and it, it's still you know a lot of a lot of companies are still getting their websites created by web designers you know without maybe having a bit of that that whole tech stack in place. Yeah. So are you having to educate the marketplace on that as well? Um, yes and no. I mean, I I actually sort of don't like that. I have a little aversion to the word educate. Yeah. Um, and it's just because I always think, like some people use that in a slightly bigger way. They always talk about, you know, it's because I come from the tech industry and they yep. always invent products and they always talk about having to educate the customers. Yes. Educate them. Yeah. The thing is, customers are quite happy they're quite happy just where they are in their thing. Yeah. And what we need to do is step into their world, mm. not educate them, but we need to translate what we've got into their world mm. and, and sort of, you know, use their language yep. and stuff. Yeah, see um, them in it. Or yeah, well, it's a bit it. like talking about rowing software, yeah. whereas if I was talking about, you know, motivation, et cetera. So, I mean, if we go back to that motivation, I'm sort of mm. going to sidetrack here, but if we talk about that motivation sort of example, 
as an exercise, would always ask companies to try and tell their story. I mean, it's a bit academic. You wouldn't do this in reality, but try to tell their story without mentioning their company and product. So what I mean by that, you know, normally a story is, hi, we've been in business for 20 years, yeah. we build our own software. What's great about that is it has feature A, B, and C. Yeah. Whereas we're sort of saying, you know, there's this bunch of teenagers in the UK, um, you know, that have this problem around, you know, health and fitness and stuff, and, you know, their main problem is lack of motivation. We've got this thingy that helps with that. Yeah. And what it's resulted in is, you know, X people better healthy, you know, and, and you yeah. can carry on, carry on, but it's, it's having really strong stories. So that's what I mean by education. It's mm. not, it's not because what they'd say is, I've sort of reacted to your word education, but they'd say, I need to educate them yeah. that the XYZ training plan in the software with the blue button <laughs> is the <laughs> best thing they could ever have. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like, no, it's not. You need to yeah. explain to them how yeah. they'll be better motivated. They need, to get a bit, <laughs> they need to give them some insights on how their life's going to be better. Yeah. Not yeah. the other way around. But anyway, what, what was the content? What was the question? Well, it was more around, you know, um, oh, with because because right. like you know, you've, you're you're building a sales system, yeah, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And and people a lot like people have got used to over the years buying a website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're not buying that. Yeah. You know, they're buying an actual sales system. Yeah. And I think you know, have you had to give people insights yeah. into why yeah. your your system is better than just yeah. getting a website? I do. I. I really like that word system mm. um, because you are building a system. Like you get a you get a piece of content on your website, like an ebook or a video. It's there for life, and then next time you put one on, you're building another one, and yeah. then then you piece, build a piece of automation that you know tells a salesperson that something. Is, and yeah. it is a computer system you're yeah. building over time. Yeah, um, we sort of find it sort of depends who you plug into, what role you plug into an organisation. We find sales leaders they're the you know, obviously it's great if you're the owner and entrepreneur, but the sales leaders, they're great people to start with. Yep. They, they are focused on the money. Yep. Focused yeah. on revenue growth. Yeah. And yeah, so they get it, right? They, they get it right. and yeah, they have yeah. budget to spend yeah. versus sometimes plugging in with the marketing thing. It's yeah. sort of like, because you don't want to start it, you can't just sort of start a discussion and say, well, your website's no good. No. It's like, well, who wants to spend money on a website? No. So it's got to sort of start with the sales thing. Yeah. And obviously to grow sales, you know, we need this in place and this in place and explain them why. Yeah. So that's where we tend to start. Um, there have been a lot of companies... You see, if you talk about the problem of sales growth, mm. revenue growth, um, everyone's on that. Yeah. I don't need to educate them about that. Like, no. they're ringing me saying, yeah, oh, yeah, they're, they're yeah. on about that. Yeah. It's just our, the details of how we go about yeah. it. Yeah, and and also why your system's obviously better than yes. than than the, than the competitors. I also find you know like I, I heard something in America a couple of years ago when I was there, and um, the guy was sick of sales and marketing not talking to each other in this one company, so he created a growth team. Oh uh, yeah, and I thought it was brilliant. Like he got them on the same page, you know, yeah. around hey, we're focused on growth, and and your role obviously is growing revenue inside businesses, right? And and I th- just thought that was a great way to put it. Um, so they were no longer on opposite sides of the fence. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What are some of the What are some of the mistakes you're seeing companies make um, um, right now in the marketplace as we look at 2024? And, and you know, markets are a wee bit tough out there for some businesses. Uh, well, the news media would have you believe that, but yep. you know, like what are What are some of the common mistakes you see? Um, well, I think just reaction to your tough. I know that it is tough, but there's still a lot of companies that are investing in. Growth, totally. It's quite cool, actually. You yeah. know, and and doing things. Um, you know, I don't know about mistakes. I mean, I think there's definitely a group of companies. You know, you tip. You know, that are they sort of don't um, or don't accept that say B two B buyers are online. Yeah. You know, and they are. Well, you know, because oh, yeah. I'm. I think that way. Um, you know, it's this whole thing of. Because I, you know, a good example, sort of like, you know, people social media. They go, well, I don't use LinkedIn. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, no one else. I can write that off. Yeah. Know, even though yeah. there's billions of people that go on it every day. Yeah. You know, so it's this. Uh, the self-referencing is is a common problem yeah. that's always been yeah. there, and that, that's a continuing one. Um, I really believe I've seen that over time and time again. Well, you know, well, well we don't use it. You know, yeah. oh, I'd never use. I never click on those ads. You know, they're you know they're yeah. a scam. 
Mm, okay, I can yeah. show you some data of a client who's just made twenty grand a day. <laughs> I know <laughs> from that, you know. Yeah, that's right. Um, but but it's like, and I always tell people, hey, even as a marketer, even as you, you just have to like let your own bias go and let the data tell you what's yeah. happening. Yeah. You know, it's actually quite a skill if you can just put your ego aside and go, you know what, yeah. I'll let the market tell me yeah. what it, what it wants to. What I know to certainly, do. you know, trying to have. Because we always talk about, you know, like if you want to know a go, if you want to build a go to market plan, like all the answers are there. Mm. They're all out in the market. Like yeah. if you if you want to know how to launch a product into Australia, all the answers yeah. is known by the people in Australia. If we could just spend time with them about yeah. what do they want, where do they want it, how do they want it. Yeah. And what's difficult is we sit here in a bubble and try and make these decisions, and yeah. that's like really stressful and hard. So always this. Trying to have a piece of research or data in all decisions is really healthy. Mm. It's really good. Very cool. Okay, so that's that's I saw I, one. I, I like the um, B two B buyers aren't on LinkedIn. Let's talk about LinkedIn for a minute. Do you, do you obviously like being on LinkedIn. You're you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What What are some of the things? Um, I know because I just had a great conversation with a social media strategist about LinkedIn, and and one of the questions that, that she said in this whole thing was. Um, when you look at social media, you need to answer the question is, what role do you play? So so I, th- we, I said to her, okay, so what role do you play on LinkedIn? And I thought it was a great question, um, you know, to, to, to actually clarify why you turn up on social media. Um, and she gave some examples of her, some of your clients, some one of your clients is, is into the, the wellness space. So part of her role on social media and one of some of the stuff she does on LinkedIn is to give people hope. Um, to give people some tools that they can use to, to actually, you know, with the anxiety and all that sort of stuff. And I thought it was really, really good. Have you ever thought about what role you play in social um, media? Yeah. Personally? Yeah, personally. Well, yeah. Like when you turn up on LinkedIn, yeah, like what's yeah. your... Oh, the role I'd like, you know, I think what a lot of people like to be is, is you know, having conversations like we're having today with people. Mm. Um, you know, whether I do that or not, because, you know, I do, I go and... A bit stop and start, you yep. know, because it's always one of these things that you find. You know, I actually have tried to put time in the calendar every week to yep. get on it. Yep. Um, yeah, we've actually had it. I mean, I think the things, you know, if you talk about, if I used a measure for that, what role I'd like to be in there is sort of when I go on there and I do something, what gets reaction or resonates. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's when, you know, I've actually we've got a little video, a little lead generation sort of video at the moment, which is sort of just talking about that B2B buyer and the challenges and connecting with people at that level. Yeah. Um, that sort of works. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably a bit, I mean the main role that we do on LinkedIn is publishing thought leadership. Yeah, and you do that well, right? I've yeah. read some of the stuff that you guys are putting out, you know, and, and around um, positioning yourself around that revenue yeah. growth, right? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's not, make no mistake, if you come to see these guys, that this is what we're up to, yeah. you know? Here's, here's what we're going to help you do, you know? Uh, and for for businesses reading that, the cool thing about it is you can hit across most people in a business when it comes to revenue growth. Yep. Um, because at some stage in a business, especially those professionals, they're all they're all talking about that sort of stuff. They're all they're all either even in a team, hey, read this article, you know, they, they increase their sales by doing this, you know? You no one's gonna not share that, right? Yeah, that's right. It's it's a it's a it's a cool platform to be. Um, okay, so what? Anything else that you see um, the common mistakes that that, that um, business owners make in the, in this marketing space? Uh, well, not investing in technology. Yeah, is definitely one. Um, you know, they're not thinking of it. it. I think come back to your concept of a system. I like that because it's this what we. I mean, without getting into all the details, but we can sort of set up a whole lot of automation. So you think about that, once you set up automation, it's there forever. And so totally. you're building this stack of stuff. So yeah. just the same as you'd, you know, build out your finance system or some other inventory or yeah. some piece of software on your production platform, you sort of keep working on it and fixing yeah. it. That's what the sales and marketing stuff's about. Yeah. And so, Well, it's also about making things predictable. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Because if you can, at the end of the day, you, you know, you run the numbers. If you get X amount of traffic to a website, you get X amount of people to download uh, a lead, lead magnet that, or, or watch a video, you pretty much can, can tell over time, it's predictable how many yeah, people are going to yeah. do something, right? Yeah. Um, and that's just quantity versus quality, right? And then you just have to put those numbers through it sometimes. You know, that, I suppose we haven't talked about that, but that's, the, you know, the benefit of a lot of this is, is visibility, you know, like, there's numbers across everything. 
there's yeah. no hiding. So yeah. it does change how you sort of perform in marketing. You know, marketing, you know, back in the day, you know, it was all about, you know, we had lunches and you know, good ideas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now it's, it's, it's more crunching the numbers and it's yeah. all visible. So the approach we t- try and take with our customers is, you know, we sort of sit on the same side of the table as them and say, we don't know. What we're going to do yeah. is we'll try this and we're going to measure it. And we'll, we'll try six things and we'll measure them all and then we can start investing in things that work and turning off things that don't. And nice. that's sort of the journey we go on. So we're, I'm quite, um, I'm really open in the workshop, you know, first thing, and they say yeah. sort of what's the magic answer? Yeah. Um, my standard answer, particularly back when we used to do a lot of research, was I've got no idea. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you my opinion, but I don't know how you should yeah. launch a product in Aussie. Yeah. But how about we go and talk to some Aussie people? Yeah. How about we try LinkedIn? How about we try that? And we'll, you know, because I can give you a bit of a feel for, I think, you know, it's probably more this than that. And yeah. then we, we start off and and everything is measurable. Yeah. You know, everything in the digital space is measurable. That's what I love about it, mm. you know? Because you know, people would say to me, oh, 50% of my marketing advertising works, I just don't know why it's 50%. Yeah. And I'm like, do you know when that was made up? Like, do you know who made that up? It was a guy in the 1883s. There's a guy, John Wanamaker, he, he owned a retail shoe retail store, and he's, he made that comment. And I'm like, I got told about that last week again. And I'm like, sorry, but that's not actually yeah. true in the digital space. Sure, some of it's a little bit grey, but most of this time, yeah. you should be able to track you know, what you're doing. And, and you should have a level of, of um, confidence to invest in technology, yeah. I would have thought today. Yeah. Um, what do you think people don't invest in though? Is it just, is it just confidence if there's a, they're burnt or they, they think it's too expensive? What, what do you think stops people? Um, well, at the marketing end, it, you know, there's a uh, fundamental lack of understanding about mm. marketing and its value. And I sort of blame us and our industry for that because yep. we, we're a bit like technical people. We always talk about the features and not benefit. And yeah. And don't talk about, we haven't connected to a problem. Like we don't want to talk about revenue as yeah. marketing people. It's yeah. like, well, if we're not talking about marketing, like a revenue, then why are we doing it? Why are we doing it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's sort of um, an issue, but. No, but it's fair enough though, mm. like because because look, I know I know how to dial in, and I know my team know how to dial in and make people money. Probably don't talk about it enough. We talk about winning, but we don't actually talk about hey, we can drive. Um, I'm just about to, we're just about to do a brand new seminar series uh, nationwide, um, and the byline is how to turn your marketing into money. Um, and and you know finally we just we're yeah. we're, we're actually going to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, because because we see it as a as what probably people really want. You know, they want they want to they want to do marketing, but they want to turn it into money. Yeah. Otherwise, why are they doing it? So, so I think that, that putting technology in mm. um, definitely helps with that connection. You know, that we call it sales and marketing alignment. Yeah. Having one common view. Yeah. Like cause norm, normally you have the marketing people got one bunch mm. of stats and worried about some yeah. weird stuff and the sales <laughs> team, you know, they just you know, so you just bring it all together. Yeah. Yeah. Fully. So so everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Um what let's go to AI then because that's technology. Where does that does that scare you or does that excite you? What where do you sit on the fence of uh Um no it doesn't scare me. I mean it's great. I'm starting to use oh, some really cool tools around mm. um just everything from recording my Zoom calls and summarising them for me automatically. Yeah. Like that's what are you using for that? Um, that's a good question, actually. We're just going through a process of, I'll tell you the one we settled on. We're just going through an evaluation nice. process on that because I, I just want one. Yeah. Um, we use Otter. Otter, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've used, yeah, we used, we've used a few different ones. Um, yeah, so I think AI, like the, I think the main thing is, look, there's, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Gartner hype cycle. Hmm. So it's a cycle where, you know, all technology goes through a curve of yeah. invention and then it gets hyped way up. They call it, the, you know, that's obviously the hype cycle. Then it goes down because everyone, to what they call the trough of disillusionment. It's basically sort of like, even it gets hyped up and then they go, oh, it's all, you know, yeah. the ultimate sort of like the segue is the example they always talk about, you know, it was going to sort of, um, or even email or whatever when it first came out, you know, yeah. it's going to remove everything, change the yeah. world, or everything's overhyped, oh, and then they go. The internet was going to take over print. Yeah, like, and then there's they, no need for print. Yeah, like, and then and then it sort of finally finds its finds its place. Yeah. So, 
there's a lot of um, because of media and stuff today. You know, a lot of you know, like my dad. If you talk to him, he's 87. He'll like he's quite worried about this AI and yeah. You know, I don't know what channel he reads. Yeah. So it's great, and the fact is, we it's just another step in evolution yeah. around productivity. Totally. You know, like oh, we're, we're, and if we're you just, processor. If you just yeah. understand that part, like yeah. you'll start using it tomorrow yeah. or today. Yeah. I think it will change. You know, like copywriting. You know, writing books is that it can do the. It can't do the finishing bit yet, but it can do, no. you know, give me the first thousand words. Like, yeah. you know, writing's not a natural thing for me, so no. quite often I, you know, use ChatGPT just to give me, just give me the bones of it, Yeah, and then I'll finish it from there. Yeah. It's really cool for that. We, um, we've started uh, talking to some guys in the States. We tried one company, but they didn't quite get it, uh, get the software there, but these guys, at, um, they're putting uh, books together from podcasts, so they'll take whatever you've got is, is content from my podcast uh, and it'll go through and analyse the themes and come back to you and go hey you could have a book based on this this and this or you can yeah. have this book on this this and this yeah, yeah. which I thought was really cool like because they're, they're taking your data your information yeah, um, and then going hey here's where you could create a book and that type of stuff which is I think the AI it, one thing we've just got to watch we'll look back on this is you know because I come from the tech industry so I'm sort of comfortable around tech terms so yeah. What's happened with AI is it's one of these words that we've just used to replace, you know, like we don't use the word software anymore, no. we use AI. So yeah. a lot of AI is, if you just said, I've got a computer program that's yeah. programmed, yeah. you know, fully. It, it's not, there's nothing special no, about no, it. It's I the same it. software we had yesterday, yeah. but now you've called it AI and I'm scared no, of it. And also what they've done is they bought a domain name called .ai. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Like, because I had this discussion with these guys in the states, we're in a mastermind group, and he was saying, "Oh, I've got this website with all these AI tools," and I went and had a look, and I was like, "Hmm, some of yeah. those are just software tools yeah. with now AI, or they've gone powered by AI." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you think of uh, if I want to drive to the other side of town, I put the address into Google Maps. Yeah. Do you know it actually works out the best route, and yeah. it tells me, you know, yeah. like. That was around before the term AI. It's yeah. just really, really smart yeah. computer software. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we just got to be, I suppose, it, just embrace it. Don't yeah. be scared of it. I had a funny situation the other day because um, I met a young girl and we were looking, discussing um, some things that we were looking to hire for. And she told me um, this book that she'd been reading around ChatGPT. And I thought, oh, that's a really good book. I'm going to go get that. So I went to the bookstore um, and I saw another book on AI. I thought, oh, I'll read that as well. You know, I go up to the counter and the lady is like, Put the books down. She goes, "Oh, you're into that, are you?" <laughs> and I went, I, "I kind of felt dirty there for a second. I was like, into what you mean?" She goes, "Oh, you're one of those people. You're into that stuff." And I was like, "What?" Well, she goes, "Well, that chat and that AI stuff." And she goes, um, "I said, oh, I go, well, what do you know about it?" She goes, "Oh, it's really dangerous." And I said, "Well, what do you mean by that?" You know? Yeah. And she goes, "Oh, it's going to take over things." And I was like, "Oh, like what? What? What sort of things?" Because I'm just naturally going to ask you so many questions. You're going to wish you'd never. Yeah. Because um, I want, I never didn't want, I didn't want to put my opinion on it, but I just wanted to have her go back around and so basically I was finding out where she was getting her information yeah, yeah. from, right? And um, she was just obviously li- listening to the news and stuff. And then I just shared with her how how many um, how many cancer cancer diagnoses will happen because of AI, right? She was, oh, I didn't know that. And then I said, oh, and they're doing this, this, and this. And I said, we actually use it in our business, and we take a lot of photos, and it's actually saved us probably about two hours. From coming back from a photo shoot with a web of AI looking at the software, uh, looking at the photos, and she was like, "Oh wow, I didn't even know yeah, that." And I was yeah. like, "You just got to." I think some people get yeah. their points of reference. Yeah. But I thought it was really interesting. Like she, I was buying these books, but she just hit me up about it. Yeah. Well, it's like the internet. You realise, imagine if you'd come up with an invention way back in the oh. '80s that you said I could take all the world's knowledge, yeah, and make it available to everybody, yeah, and searchable. You know, yeah, it's like. That just feels so dangerous. So yeah, anyone yeah. could research anything yeah, and have yeah, knowledge yeah. on any topic you yeah. wanted. And they'd have stuff about me. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Social yeah. media. <laughs> Social media. Yeah. Oh, look, I think that's the thing. You do have to have an open mind. And obviously there's people out there that'll use it for, for other things. But I think in general, yeah, yeah. Uh, most business owners, you know, I just say to people, hey, find a, find a way to get an hour back using it. If you can, like, it's like you're, what you're doing with your Zoom, right? You're recording. What I figured out with Otter, um, uh, a couple of years ago when I started using it and then because I was in, in doing stuff in the States I was like well I can't go to those meetings because I want to go to the gym so I got my Otter bot would go to those meetings for me and then transcribe it but what even better is when I started getting the transcriptions back it was actually seeing the slides 
and it would give me a summary of, of, of the of where and what part this so I could click into it in the replay and go straight to the part I wanted to and I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's from brilliant. a time savings perspective. Yeah. So I think like if you come back to say that if you look at HubSpot, you know, they are you know, these all these big vendors have jumped into AI. Mm. So the way to think of how they're using AI at the moment is all about like a productivity tool. So yeah. if I'm a marketing person, I go in there, it can give me a starting text for an email. If I'm a salesperson, I can go in there and get, you know, maybe get a summary of, of the call I've just done. Yeah. You know, so it, it's all about productivity yeah. as me as a worker at the moment. How good is that? That's because awesome. if we make ourselves more productive, you know, and that's what I, you know, I said to my team, let's find an hour back a day, everyone. So we go yeah. in and we you find all these tools where we can get our time back. Yeah. Um, because I think that's, you know, if, and, and what if you could then spend that hour doing some training or doing some learning or going for a walk so that you're in a great state of mind to actually execute something better for the client, you know. Yeah. Hey man, this has been a great chat. Um, it's hard to believe we've been going an hour. So, mate, we're going to probably have to wrap this one up because, uh, mate, my, my brain is uh, definitely on fire today. I guess a couple of things before, before we go, though. Mindset. Like, where do you get and stay? How do you stay sharp? I know you did something recently probably to stay a little bit sharper, <laughs> but, but like, what, how do you stay sharp in your mind? Um, yeah, sharp. Um, well, I think for me... Um, you know, balance is that's sort of a bit of a value of concentrating. Mm. You know, because we we work hard and you know trying to be the best we can there. So, like my background, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. You know, I'm a veggie garden sort of yep. gardening builder. Yeah. Come from a family of builders and engineers type nice. guy. So, I'm the happiest that I can be if I have like a deck to build, yeah, <laughs> or a garden to build. Nice. No, that's just me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's good though. Yeah, right? and mountain biking, exercise. Yeah. You got to exercise. Yeah. A lot of people don't do you know any exercise at all. So it's trying to find all those interests outside of work, and yeah. then you can work hard. And but you know, so one thing we've always done in concentrate. You know, there's a few exceptions. Is you know, I've traditionally never worked on the weekends. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just. Yeah, you know, particularly in the corporate world, you just get you know you just get this big you get this behaviour thing. So I remember yeah. way back I was um, I had this thing about working at night, mm. and I just and so I found myself during the day I started doing a pile of stuff on the floor, um, like papers because I I was saving that for the evening. It was sort of oh that'd be a that'd be a nice oh, job wow. for tonight, nice job for tonight. Yeah, and yeah. I'd go home and I'd always working, and then I yeah. went away at Christmas and I came back and I went I'm going to stop that. And I stopped at cold turkey just yeah. to work at night, and it didn't make any difference to anything. Nah. Like, there was no work not done or yeah, anything. Yeah, 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 because you would have just done that. It was work. just a pattern, and yeah. you start fiddling at night, yeah. too. Yeah. You know? Same, yeah. So yeah. That's all. I think that's what sort of, I suppose, you can come back to work and um, get into it. Yeah, well, it's going to be there, right? And, and look, at the end of the, end of the day, I think if you don't look after your own mindset and your own, if you don't have some things outside, because as a business yeah. owner, that you can have a temptation to to not turn yourself off, and yeah. I think a lot of people do get burnt out. You know, 20, you don't go twenty years, you have, you know, it's, and it's not all plain sailing, right? You've had a few things go yeah. wrong, a few things go sideways. You had some huge wins, some losses, and and it takes a resilient inner mindset to be able to do that for that period of time, and you can't be on the whole time. Yeah. Um, so, so having and finding some things um, is is important. Would you say, you know, if you look at back at those twenty years, is that one of the things that really uh, steered you in good good terms? Is, is having that balance and being prepared not to, you know, I guess settle for because it'd be easy just to not have balance, right, and to yeah, work yeah. and you know. Yeah. yeah. So we've always had a month off at Christmas. We've always yeah, had, nice. Since day one, we've managed to have four weeks off, go camping, you know, put the tent up. Yeah. Basically, I sort of say, you know, if you can find me, you could <laughs> you can talk to me. Uh, so, you know, getting off the grid type thing. Yeah, so, nice. Um, yeah, no, it has been a big part. You know, yeah. in kids' sport and kids and stuff yeah. like that, that's all part of it. You've yeah. got to live life, Jeepers. Yeah. Because yeah, well, I think, look, so one of the biggest challenges I find for particularly, you know, new people come in to concentrate and observe them is working in an agency in a lot of businesses, it's just continuous. Yeah. And they seem to think, well, if I do a massive amount of work today, I'll clear the decks and life will be good. Yeah. But here, tomorrow is another pile coming in. Yeah, so yeah, you've yeah. got to get your brain yeah. somehow programmed that, yeah. you know, you've got to work hard, but to, 
you've got to have a protection mechanism yeah. around that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. No, it's so true, right? Because especially when you're dealing with different businesses, yeah. you know, the, 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 there's a constant cycle of what's going on. Yeah. Especially if you're good, you know, if, if the company's got a good reputation, you're going to get work, like yeah. you, you yeah. know. So you go, yeah. I think sometimes you know, we're hiring at the moment, and I'm I'm doing my best to push people away. Yeah. You know, just to see if they've got what they've got. You know, yeah. because I know if yeah. I can push them away and they still want to keep coming forward, yeah. then they're probably going to handle it here because yeah. it's not, you know, agency work. It's like anything, but it is quite a high performing area, right? Like, you know, you're not you're not dealing. Um, or it's not a it's not an environment where you can just sometimes just clock in and clock out too, right? You've got to you've got to put the work in. Um, man, this has been a great chat. I really appreciate you taking the time. Is there anything else you wanted to share? Just the one last uh, before I let you tell people where you come from and where you are and how they can get hold of you because I know there'll be people listening to Gay going right. I'm going to do this. Um, well, not really. I think just sort of my final reflection on the marketing industry is that you know um, it's it's just a massive opportunity now, mm. you know, just this whole analytical side of marketing yeah. and stuff. So it's a great career and things for people who are analytical that are outside of the, you know, you still need the creative piece, yeah, yeah. but it's, there's, you know, it's a great, I did come back to my degree in operations research. I'm basically a maths guy. Yeah. And nice. today's actually my time. If, yeah. You know, if you had so maths, good. software yeah. with an understanding of marketing fundamentals, yeah, yeah. you're a massive career opportunity. Yeah, fully. That, and that's, you know, because you need to understand the data and you need to understand what that data means to all the, mm. to, to people, right? So, yeah. Okay, so where do people find you? Where do, where do you guys hang out? Um, so, yeah, we're based in Christchurch in the Epic building. Um, you can find us on our website, concentrate.co.nz, um, or flick me an email at owen at concentrate.co.nz. So good. We'll put all these in the show notes as well. Plus, we'll put your uh, LinkedIn profile because you've got some really cool stuff. Uh, some of those posts that you're putting out, people need to need to engage with that. So we'll put that information out there as well. Man, I appreciate your time. It's been so good. Uh, you know, obviously, as I said at the start, talking to a fellow marketer um, with experience. I think that that's real cool. Uh, you going away for the weekend to celebrate your birthday? Yeah, I'm going down. We're going. I want a place down in Maryland. Got family and mucking around. So good. So good. good. Awesome. Hey, well, thanks for being on the podcast. Hey, and as always, I only need you to do one thing. If you've really enjoyed this podcast, you've listened to a couple of things that uh, Owen said uh, around technology and investing in technology and how you can use it to, to grow your business and generate more revenue, then I want you to share it. I want you to share the podcast. Uh, we're getting some massive downloads now uh, back into number one spot for New Zealand for marketing. Uh, so it's really, really, I really, really appreciate you guys sharing. But if you can share this podcast, that'd be fantastic. Until then, make sure you have some fun out there and as always, take action.